The A-10 Thunderbolt II, affectionately called the Warthog, is the subject of our next build to demonstrate our TCP-10606 A-10 Thunderbolt II set in the gray flipper camouflage scheme. The Warthog got its name from the sound generated by its GAU-8A 30mm cannon which fires at the rate of 3,900 rounds per minute. It usually fires this cannon in one to two second bursts only to prevent overheating and to conserve ammunition. The maximum ordnance load for the A-10 is 16,000 pounds. Since the gray flipper scheme was used in the late 1980s for the A-10, it had the capability of having a variety of ordnance attached. Thus, I chose to build all of the ordnance types supplied in the kit, sparrow rockets, cluster bombs, and napalm canisters, plus the ECM jamming pod. The Ravel 148 scale kit of the A-10 Thunderbolt II is a nicely detailed kit with very little flash visible on the parts. As we build this model and the chapters which follow, I will attempt to group sections together that are relevant, such as cementing, spray or hand painting, masking, etc. <laughs> The booklet of directions supplied by Ravel has 14 pages dedicated to the building and painting of all components. I will follow all of the instructions except for painting the external parts as I am painting this model in the three color gray flipper camouflage scheme with appropriate decals. As you can observe on the sprues included in the kit, all of the parts have nice details molded in. There are many parts to be cut off the sprues and sanded prior to assembly or painted. I will not show this part of the operation as it is boring. The modeler, whether novice to expert, should be aware the parts need to be sanded smooth after removal from the sprue for good fit. Besides more ordnance, fuel pod, and other parts, I am showing the clear parts sprue and the decals supplied in the kit. Some of the generic decals for the A-10 may be used on this model. <music> Let's start by cementing lots of parts together. I am using Plastruck Plastic Weld and a pointed paintbrush to put the halves of the Sparrow missiles together. The Plastruck Plastic Weld is not a cement, but rather a strong solvent mix that softens the plastic on each side of the seam so that the plastic fuses together. The same thing can be observed with Tamiya Thin Cement, so you have a choice of which to use. However, you should be made aware that neither of these will give you the same high adhesion as you would get by using CA to cement parts together. <music> There are eight cluster bombs to cement together. I will demonstrate putting four of them together in this section 
and the other four will be done offline using the same technique. Again, I am using the Plastruct plastic weld. I am not using the brush supplied in the Plastruct bottle as it is too thick and delivers too much solvent to the seam. Two launch rails for the Sparrow rockets are now being cemented together. Note, you should put the Plastruct plastic weld on both sides of the juncture to ensure a good bond, as you are going to hang the Sparrow rockets on those rails. Note, that I use the terms cement or fuse interchangeably when using the Plastruck weld or the Tamiya Thin Cement. What is obvious to most modelers is the large fuel pod for the A10. Apply the Plastruck plastic weld to the entire seam, taking your time to go around the entire pod twice if necessary. The ECM jamming pod halves are next to fuse together. It should be noted that all of the parts we have done so far will be spray painted later on. Varying colors will be used on different ordnance as called out for in the instructions. <laughs> Two napalm containers. What they are called in directions, but I am more familiar with them being called canisters, are the next two pieces of ordnance to cement together. One is shown in this video, the other is done the same way. In this section, I am cementing the right arm onto the pilot. I first placed some plastic weld on the shoulder and then put the arm in place, holding it for a few seconds to get some bond. Using CA, I am cementing the upper and lower sections of the two wings together. There are several reasons for this. One, there is going to be multiple masks applied because of the three color camouflage scheme. And two, there are many parts that will be attached to the lower portion of each wing. The CA will ensure that the upper and lower sections do not come apart during the removal of the masks or handling of the model. 
Since CA was already in the application dish, I am using CA to cement the wheel halves together. I did not want to waste what was left in the dish. If you have any questions about techniques explored in this video, or general questions about this build, please post your questions in the comments section below.